This video is sponsored by LD Player. Hi. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is an Echoes of Mana video. Most certainly a first impressions review kind of thing. And so my guys, I do know that this game has been out for quite a while. I am kind of late to the pack. And so if you guys did manage to actually try this game out, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Otherwise, you already know the drill. This is going to be very much about the production value. This is going to be a big review on all of the different aspects, the music, the environment, the character designs, the combat, as well as looking at some of the systems like gacha rates or like equipment systems maybe it gets really really freaking dank and so my guys with that being said let's jump right into the content itself so here we have the echoes of mana this is the launch screen with the language selector i'm gonna go ahead and hit english and this actually feels all right so far it's actually 60 fps which is very very good to see so considering i'm from australia asia pacific however you cannot change your region later i suspect if you guys are going to be doing any rerolls you guys better be very careful as to which region you pick and so right off the bat we have some beautiful imagery we have have some beautiful music we've got an awesome load screen and if you guys can hear the background music which i really really hope you can it's nice it's very very nice and so i've kicked off the game and immediately i'm given a choice between a female or a male adventurer i I do like that. I do hope that more games in the future will actually be able to give you this choice between having a female or male MC. And so something that I did want to say before I got into this is that I had a look at the trailer. I wasn't really impressed with the trailer at all. And so my first, like my zeroth impression is that I'm not going to like this game too much. But like from what I've seen from just playing the game itself with the 60 FPS with like some of these high quality cutscenes, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm interested. All right, so here is the first cutscene. Again, the performance is actually quite good, although the loading screen did take quite a while, maybe just a little bit longer than usual, but we've got animations here. We've got animations actually playing out whilst the characters are talking, which is really, really nice because a lot of like the other gacha games are kind of like, oh, my uh, live 2D bust is over here and they are talking to somebody else that is over on this side. So yeah, just a lot going on. I think there was an explosion and we actually have cutscenes. We have cutscenes with like people doing things and things happening. I know it sounds ridiculous, but like it's actually not overly common these days to have something like this. All right, my guys. And so we are in our first battle. Let's uh, let's try going left and right. So I'm using actually my A and D keys because that is what LD player has mapped it out to be. And then I can right mouse button over here to probably attack. Okay. So it looks like I have a whole bunch of skills over here. I can use the E double strike. Mm, this is, this is kind of cool. I'm kind of liking this because it's more like action oriented than like your typical turn-based. I think I have enough turn-based games in my life right now. So yeah. Uh, and it looks like we have an ultimate skill with the Q. That's, that's kind of cool. All right. Let's, can I kind of kite them? So if I hit them a few times, can I kind of run away? Oh, okay. I have shift to dash. That's actually kind of cool. So I could dodge with this button over here. And then I also have this armor thing, harvest boon. Maybe I get some, uh, get some defense up or something. So it looks like you can actually hold the skills in combat to get a description of it. Gain SA, which maybe is super armor and con, which is probably concentration for 45 seconds. And then just looking at like these stats up here, it looks like we have HP. We've got HP into mana into potentially our alt gauge. So I'm going to use that. And that has gone down to 0%. It looks like that is our ultimate. So honestly, just seeing like the teasers, they don't really do it justice because like I said, I did kind of go like, kind of like not really want to play the game because of the teaser however they're like it's it's actually playing out all right and so this is what i'm talking about we've got our we've got our normie cutscenes here potentially this is probably what we're going to get for the rest of the game oh my lord what the frick is going on here what, what am i supposed to hit it really reminds me of like single target sorry single player rpgs oh my god i just did the sickest dodge in my life all right can i use that but man i gotta say from like an art style direction this is really really eerie like it's a little bit spooky and so i guess that's that man yeah honestly this story is kind of compelling I, I do gotta say it's it's actually really cool like i don't know about you guys but mana like the mana series when i was a kid was very very popular i certainly played a lot of the games on like the ds on the game boy and so yeah this is kind of reminiscent of that however at this point we have a 1.75 gig download I'll see you guys on the other side. And so we've kind of landed on like our UI. However, I am being forced to go into chapter one. This is very, very standard. It looks like a gacha. However, the style is really like olden day. I gotta say, 
I'm not a massive fan of it. However, like the setting and like the vibe that they are going for, I think it is appropriate. So if you guys have seen like, you guys have seen maybe Mitrosphere or like Octopath, this is very, very similar to that. So here we've got the party system. I'm going to add some Baldi and we're going to see, yeah, look at this. Um, This load time is a little bit long for emulator. However, it might be better on mobile. If you guys do know, let me know down in the comments. But at this point, like I've had quite a few of those long load times. And so before we go set off on our adventure, I do see a skip scene down here. And I also see an auto venture, which is, I suspect like uh, an auto adventure. So whilst there seems to not be actually like a skip system, there is an auto system, which hopefully might be able to just like grind out your materials. However, like I say about all of these games, if it's going to have like an auto system, might as well skip at that point, right? And so it looks like we do have like the in-game cutscenes, which is not just two people talking to each other. I, I love this. I'm a massive, massive fan of this. However, at this point, I am getting frame rate drops. You can see I'm dropping down to like 30 frames, potentially even to 24 frames I saw before. And that combined with like the long load screens from before, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of the performance right now. And so here we have another battle. However, I do see that we can actually actually tap on our character portraits to switch around. That's that's actually really cool. So I can do the dodge. You can see I am this character over here and I am on 22 FPS. All right. I am not impressed. That is um that is really really freaking sad. So I do see this tab button up here. This is essentially going to change the skill wheel. So you have access to up to 6 skills at a fast rate. And so in terms of the combat, I do got to say it's kind of satisfying, but like because of the low FPS, it's not very, very pleasant to play. And this is the part of the gameplay that I did see in the trailer. It plays like how it looked in the trailer, which is not that great. All right, my guys, y'all already know what it is. It is rolling time. I do see Secrets of Mana. I do see Trials of Mana. I have played both of those games. And so it looks like if you are a fan of the IP, you will be pleasantly surprised to see that you're able to get some of those characters from those respective games. Let's hope to get something big here and let's whack the tree, get a piece of fruit. Okay, uh, I guess not. Let's uh, let's gently pluck the fruit and we're going to get... Please be waifu. Please be waifu. Please be waifu. <laughs> and so, da -ding, we got a three-star Randy. Do we get to reroll? Can, can we, can we kind of do the thing? And so on the next screen, it's going to let us draw again. This is nice. This is very, very nice considering like all of the games that we've actually tried out in the last few weeks. I think they've all had selectors or like infinite reroll selections. So that is actually really, really nice. So my dudes, I spared you the pain of my relentless rerolling. I am settling with this character over here. Reese, she looks pretty cool. Let's just take her and let's move on. All right, so it looks like we are actually going to go into the game now. We have some login bonuses. This is a four star ally echo harvest ticket. That sounds very, very interesting. And we have a whole bunch of crystals coming up. And then a very, very familiar looking login bonus screen. This very much reminds me of the Dragalia one. I don't know. I think like it's the whole signpost with like the green leaf stuff and a flying character on the side. All right, guys, before we go any further, let me take a short break to talk about our sponsor, LD Player. LD Player is a modern lightweight emulator that will fulfill all of your gaming needs and desires. They've got features like multi-instancing, we've got uh, we've got sync operations somewhere, we've got macros somewhere, and we've also got an LD store in which you can download APKs from other regions, which you should not be able to. Their community support is also great, and there is a reason why I always come back to promote LD Player. But that said, if you would like to try out Echoes of Mana on LD Player, head on down to the description or the pinned comment below and click on the link. Thanks again to LD Player for the sponsorship, and with that, let's get back to it. And so it looks like we have finally made it into the actual game itself with the UI and everything. Let's explore a little bit. Um, I, I am getting a little bit of the frame rate drops, but like, oh, I can interact with things. Okay. I personally really like the fact that you can run around and stuff because it just makes the game feel a little bit more alive, right? And so it looks like right here, I am going to be upgrading my allies, probably boosting up their levels. And here is the long load screen again. <laughs> and so I do notice that my character has live 2D. Uh, oh, only the three star has live 2D. Okay, it looks like the two stars and one stars may not have it. Honestly, this UI is pretty clean. The only thing that I'm not sure about is like, what is con? What is SPR? Probably spirit. And I'm wondering what exactly they do. Like con actually with a shield icon, maybe it does like your defenses. But what exactly does spirit do? Maybe, maybe it adds to your magic attack. Okay, so from these character screens, we can come over here. We can uh, level up. We can probably access skills there. And this looks like we are going to be able to ascend 
stars. So here are some really, really important pieces of information. Use allies of the same rarity and ascend an ally to raise their level cap and unlock an all new mana board. So it looks like to start up your characters, you're actually going to need like some of the same rarities. I think Epic 7 uses this system as well. However, what I am more interested in is this one over here. Use duplicate allies and unleash an ally to level up their skills and special techniques. So that's where the dupes come in. All right, so straight off the bat, we find out how the dupes affect the gameplay. It's okay. I think some of the other games, like, is it Slime or maybe it was Konosuba. but I can't quite remember, but they used a similar system where you had to use dupe characters to level up skills. All right, otherwise, let's have a look at our town. We can talk to some of these people, we'll tap up there. We can talk to this flying rabbit sheep thing. And so that sneaky little rabbit actually took me to the rolling screen. I don't have any currency to roll with, so let me go find the mailbox over here and let's do a quick sneaky collect. And so now I am filled to the brim with some jemmies. Let's go ahead and harvest some more fruits. Long load screen again. Oh, not that long this time. All right, let's have a look at some of these banners. We have a four star ally echo harvest. Uh, this was from our login bonus. Let's go ahead and use this and see what we get. All right, and we're gonna go pick some fruit. I'm gonna do the skipperino. I think we've already seen the animations. It is going to be a rainbow fruit. So I suspect the four stars are actually the highest rarity as opposed to the three star we, that we got before. However, my guys, this character, I did see him during re-rolling. So I suspect that there might be a three star and four star variant of these characters, which is, oh no. <laughs> All right, that out of the way, let's have a look at like the rates. I do see a kind of pity system. So it looks like one roll equals one point. I'm gonna go try find this shop. And so here is the shop. You can see there are two four star units, the highest rarities. Come on, load screen. Let's go back a little bit. And we can see over here that it costs 200 rolls to actually go ahead and spark somebody. Where are the rates though? So it looks like we have a 3% rate to hit the four stars of which 1.5% of that 3% is going to be the featured one. That's doesn't seem too bad. However, it does look like the pool is kind of diluted by something called a memory gem. I think it's these guys over here. Oh, wow. This is, um, this is very Dragalia like. This is essentially a worm print system or like kind of like your equips except instead of like pure stats it gives you uh, plus 50% restored HP amount and normal attack damage plus 40%. I suspect there's yeah there's gonna be a skill damage one there's probably like a charged attack one. Ooh, okay this is a uh, okay that's that's interesting let's let's do some rolls. I'm just plucking the fruit skip 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 let's hope for a no rainbow no bueno that's okay that is going to be one three star Thanatos. It looks like the yellow are going to be the three stars. So I need to go have a look at the three star rate. That seems, wait, another one? Wait a second. Wait, wait, but that was a blue one. That, that doesn't make sense. Hold up, that's three three stars. What are the rates of these three stars? It seems a little bit high. All right, and so it looks like we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six three stars. That's more than the two stars I have. Ah, so it looks like every 10 pulls, we are going to get a guaranteed three star. Okay, that's pretty standard. Okay, so here we are back on the home screen kind of thing. I do see a call up button, which is really interesting. I suspect there's going to be like raids or something. And then just having a look in the allies menu again, I do see this slot up here, which I suspect, yep, it's going to let us equip these, uh, um, memory things. I forgot. I was just thinking worm prints. Sorry, guys. Memory gems. That's it. All right. So let's just equip one and off we go. So it looks like these memory gems can actually be upgraded, although I don't have any of these from here. And there's another menu button. Oh God, this lag. Uh, yeah, I gotta say these lags are, it's kind of killing me right now. Honestly, I've probably spent more time in loading screens than actually like trying to navigate the game itself. I'm I'm not very impressed by this one. And so here we have a character bond system. Not bad at all. I, oh, I thought we were gonna be able to like see some stories or something. Nope, we just get bombarded by a bunch of currencies. <laughs> Not like this, guys. <laughs> Not like this. All right, so here we are at the shop, Spirit Crystal Shop. I think this might be the Jemmies. This is uh, this is quite expensive. I mean, it's it's in line with like your typical gacha game packs, but yeah, I feel like we're looking at forty dollars per ten pulls. That's. <laughs> 
that's a lot, holy crap. Not very sure I can get behind those prices, hopefully this will be a little bit free to play with some nice income. And so I'm about to go back into that same match before, I'm going to hit the recommended, I'm going to hit all and it's hopefully going to configure my party, very nice. I'm going to order adventure and let's see what exactly this is going to do for us. So it looks like I can just set it to keep going until I run out of stamina, but I can also use my stamina pots as well. That's pretty nice. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and see what exactly happens. All right. And so after 43 years and 12 world wars, we are finally in game. It looks like we are going to be having the game play for us on its own. I, my hands are here, my guys, my hands are here and it is auto playing. Uh, seems pretty good. I, I don't I know what I expected. This is exactly what I expected, actually. However, if we're going to have to go through that load screen every single time, it's going to be really, really freaking crazy. And so, yeah, from the second run onwards, we had a little bit of a faster loading screen, which is really good because the first time it actually took ages. My guys, I'm going to kind of like stop there because I, I'm really, really sick of these loading screens. Like I said, I've probably spent more time loading than actually playing the game. And so, yeah, final verdict in terms of like the music, in terms of the art style, in terms of like honestly like the game itself if I was to look at it as a game and not a gacha with all these gacha systems it's actually kind of fun to play it's quite pleasant to play you can run around you can whack things you have a bunch of skills in terms of the systems themselves such as the gacha system and the equipment systems the gacha system it's not too bad it seems like it's a three percent rate for the four star rarities which is the highest it seems pretty reasonable actually a little bit high however we do need to remember that in the pool there are also those memory gems which are kind of dying diluting it. In terms of the Spark 200, I feel like that's okay. However, you can only really tell when you can decide from the income. At this point, it's feeling kind of stingy. And so would I recommend you guys play this just upon first impressions? I think give it a shot, especially on mobile. I don't know how it performs on mobile, but on emulator, this, is, this isn't really it. Because even though the game itself is actually quite well made, like it's all cohesive menus and the art style is consistent and all of that, the performance issues on the emulator is enough to make me kind of go like, nah, I wouldn't keep going with this. It's really frustrating. Another game that was kind of like this was the slime game. It was very cohesive. It was quite fun as well. However, the performance was just dragging it down. It's just, that's just not good enough. Look at that, four FPS, 12 FPS. Yes, that's that's not it, man. And so my guys, if you did want to give it a shot, I would recommend trying it on the phone. However, with that, that is going to bring us to the end of this video. My guys, let me know if you are going to be trying this game out. It's... Yeah, I think I've said all I really needed to. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I'll really appreciate that. So thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video or this video kind of helped you, please consider a like, a subscribe, or a notification bell on. However, as Reese said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.